So a few weeks ago, we explored an AI platform that could help in correcting text mistakes on images generated by platforms like Midjourney. And I mentioned my belief that we'd soon see even more innovative AI solutions. Well, folks, the future is now. Say hello to Ideogram AI, the groundbreaking platform that's taken the world by storm. Hey, everyone, it's Brian here. I hope you're all doing great. Today we're going to take a look at Ideogram.ai and discover how this game-changing tool can help us to increase our portfolios by churning out more amazing designs and supercharge our online sales success. Are you ready for this? Let's head over to my PC and get started. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome to my computer screen. Let's get started. So as you can see here, we're currently on the Ideogram homepage. And basically all I did was I went into Ideogram.ai. Given the fact that I didn't have an account as yet, I just registered. It was free to register. And I was brought to this page that we are seeing over here. Now, it is really simple to use. There's nothing that's, you know, difficult or you have to wrap your head around. Basically, anybody can use this program and really reach a high degree of success with it in terms of the way of the images that you generate. So basically, you've got your your field over here where you're going to key in whatever, you know, prompt that you want to give the platform to generate an image for. Then at the bottom over here, you've got these different tabs, photo, poster, 3D render, typography, cinematic, painting. Basically, these are sort of like the more popular tabs that you could click on so that you could tell Ideogram to give a lot more weighting to this particular style. If you click on see all here, it's going to give you an entire list of all the different tabs that you can actually click on. Or if you just want to feel lucky and see what the program will give to you, you can just click on lucky style and allow the platform to generate, you know, an image for you. So just above me here are the dimensions that you can choose for the image to be generated in. You've got 10 is to 16, 1 is to 1, and 16 is to 10. I tend to shoot for the 1 is to 1. Um, I feel that having used this platform for some time now, the 1 is to 1 gives me a great ratio. Um, I get that nice square format. And then if I wanted to increase the size of it, I could use the Uncrop platform in the video that I showed you last week. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put the thumbnail on the screen right now. It's a great tool to use if you want to increase the uh, scene that you are creating. Um, take a look at that video after watching this one between Ideogram and Uncrop. Two amazing tools that are really going to help take your print on demand business to the next level. So let's just take a look here what we've got. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here so we can get more of the website in screen on the screen here. Let's just click on reset here. Okay, so basically what happens is that as people are creating images, very similar to the Mid Journey Gallery, even Blue Willow, and a lot of these other you know AI image generating platforms, you'll have a rolling scroll of images that are being created by users on the platform at the moment. So as you can see here, the website is constantly changing. You're basically seeing whatever is being generated at that moment. And this is actually a really interesting thing too as well, because if you are still new to the AI image scene, and maybe perhaps you are uncertain about what you're going to type in, what you are going to prompt, you could take a look at some of the other images that are being generated by other users, and basically you can see what kind of you know prompts they're using, and then you can just basically pick and choose some aspects of the prompts that you're seeing over here, or copy and paste them to a Google Doc or a Word document, so that you can generate your own unique prompts to create your own unique designs through the use of this particular platform. Now, I already went ahead and basically utilized some prompts just to give you an idea, an example of the power of this particular platform. So basically I thought, you know, we're going into the fourth quarter, some really amazing holidays are coming up. We've got Halloween, we've got Thanksgiving. So I thought, why not create some images for these holidays through the use of this platform and benefit from, you know, the, the, the text aspect that this platform has really become very well known for. So let's just take a look at the first tab here. So the prompt that I used was vector t-shirt design, vintage Halloween pumpkin and graveyard scene, tombstone reads. Now we're not seeing it all. You need to do is just click on it. It says tombstone reads, happy Halloween, 4K surrealistic depictions, okay? So these were basically certain prompts that I've come to use in Mid Journey in Blue Willow, and I thought, let's put it into this particular platform and see what we get back. And as you can see here, I chose the ratio of one is to one. So after clicking generate, I've already went ahead and generated because sometimes it takes a little bit long to generate depending on how many people are on the system at the moment. So basically, we've got these four images that you know, Ideogram has generated for me. And as you can see here, 
on the whole, we've got some really great spelling here. So we've got Happy Halloween, which obviously was spelled correct. We've got this scene over here. I'm not really too worried about that because if I really wanted to download it, I could just easily erase you know, this word scene here and I got a really amazing image that I could use as a sticker for a t-shirt or again, for any of the other products that, you know, print on demand is very well known for printing on. This one here, we've got Halloween here. If I had to do this in Mid Journey or Blue Willow, I can bet you a million dollars that the spelling would come out incorrect. This is going to be saving me a ton of time because I know that, you know, on the whole, this platform is going to get the spelling correct. Now we got here Happy Halloween and we've got sort of the tombstone which looks a bit like a pumpkin, an oblong pumpkin. But again, we've got Halloween spelled, I believe it's spelled correct. No, it isn't. We've got one L here. And then in this one here, we've got Happy Halloween. And on the tombstone, we've got, I think it's an H here. No, it isn't. It's a, it's a K. But the great thing about this platform is that if you don't like an image that has come up, you can go ahead and remix it. Now I know a lot of you are saying, well, you can remix in Mid Journey too as well. You can. But the brilliant thing about this is that when you remix, you're increasing the possibility of a design that you know this platform has presented to you that you like, but you wanna make sure that you get it with the spelling correct. So let's just click on remix over here and we'll wait for the platform to generate. We'll click on generate here. And again, like I said, you know, it depends on how many people are on the system here. So it's generating as we speak, all right? And when it's generating the pictures, they're sort of blurry and, and it won't present them to you until it's completely done. So you can get an idea of what is coming up. I think we're gonna get some really great images over here. So we got Happy Halloween, we've got the skull face here, Happy Halloween. This one is Happy Halloween here. Okay, so yeah, it's not 100% perfect, but it is a far cry better than Mid Journey and Blue Willow. Let's go on to some others to see, you know, what we got. Basically, we typed in cute Halloween ghost drinking iced coffee t-shirt design, cartoon style design, 3D render, 4K, and steampunk, okay? And after generating it, we got these really amazing images over here. Again, t-shirts, coasters, sticker packs. The next one, we got vector t-shirt design, death riding a black cat, Cartoon style design, 3D render, 4K steampunk. And just take a look at these images over here. I mean, they're really spot on. And if you want to see one more in detail, all you have to do is click on it. And obviously the platform will enlarge it. And at the bottom over here, you've got your other images that you can just click on them so that you can see an enlarged image of it. And then obviously if there's something that you like, you can either download it or if you're not happy with it, you can remix it. But again, look at these images that it has generated. So then I thought to myself, I wonder if this platform would be smart enough to understand, you know, creating a sticker pack for me. So for those of you know, on Redbubble, you know, on the sticker image, you can put three, four, five, maybe even six designs evenly spaced them out. And obviously you'd be providing more stickers for one low price on Redbubble, which can help to increase the amount of sales that you get on Redbubble. So I went ahead and I typed in Halloween sticker pack with six evenly spaced Halloween clip arts, okay? That was just my basic prompt. I wanted to see if this platform would understand it. And then, you know, if it weren't, I could just type in more keywords in it to refine the types of images that I would want it to provide for me. And this is what I got. If you take a look here, we've got number three and number four. We've got a really amazing sticker pack. In fact, we've got nine Halloween stickers over here. And if we go to the next one, we have yet another nine. All right, this one is a little bit too close for my liking, but then again, you know what? You could always go in, just grab the lasso tool, just basically select it and just move it down, get rid of the orange background, and you've got your sticker pack ready for upload to platforms like Redbubble. So if you wanna create some sticker packs, for whatever niche, whatever hobby, whatever event, whatever holiday, all you have to do is just include the word sticker pack and your key prompt and see what ideogram will come back to you with. Now for the next prompt, we're moving more into Thanksgiving here and I typed in an illustration of a turkey holding a sign that reads, eat spaghetti. There was some time ago, there was a popular one of a turkey holding a sign saying, eat pizza. I thought, well, let's not try and replicate that one. Let's try to change it up a little bit and come up with something different. And more importantly, to see if this platform would get it right, because spaghetti is not that easy a word to spell. And this is basically what we got. So we got eat, eat spaghetti, spaghetti spelled correctly. This one, which I think is my favorite of the three, eat spaghetti. And we've got this turkey over here. 
Um, again, this could easily be a nice square sticker. I could get rid of the green background and create a t-shirt out of it. This one, it didn't get it right. Now the next prompt, I wanted to create a funny poster sign. So I keyed in a funny party street poster sign stating, caution drunken old people. And basically this is what this platform came back to me with. So we had this traditional caution sign, if you like, check it out. You can see sort of like the little rusty marks on the, on the sign to give it that really vintage authentic look. And if we take a look at the spelling here, we got caution drunken old people, caution old people. Uh, caution, drunken, drunken old people, and again, caution, caution, drunken old people. In all four examples, we don't have any spelling mistakes. Yes, it repeated a couple words, but then you know what? I could go in and remix it, or if I want to, I could just download it and get rid of one. Like if we went to the third one here, I could just get rid of this drunken over here and then just highlight this piece over here and move it up. Maybe clone the spotted marks over here down at the bottom here. And I'd have a really cool sign that I could put on a t-shirt, tapestry or whatnot. So again, you know, this saves a lot of work. Okay, so the last one that I'm going to be sharing with you is a little bit more challenging. Basically, what I typed in was t-shirt label design with text that says, I'm not arguing, I'm just explaining why I'm right. Black background, vibrant colors, retro type text, cinematic 3D render. So I didn't click on any of the other tabs here. I just wanted to see what the platform would come back with. And basically, this is what I got. So out of all four of them, um, it looks like the last one it got right. I'm not arguing, I'm just explaining why I'm right. Um, all right, it's missing the apostrophe over there, but that can easily be rectified. But I mean, look at the designs, look at the colors that it used. Um, it knew that I wanted it on black background. It gave it to me on a dark black background. So it make it really easy to extrapolate, to get rid of the black and utilize the design that it gave me onto a t-shirt design or any of the other print on demand products that are out there. And basically all it took me was, you know, the time to key in the prompt and to wait for the platform to generate the designs. And again, if there was one that I liked, but it got it wrong, well, basically I could just click on it. Let's say, let's try this one over here. I'm gonna click on it and we'll just hit the remix and basically see what comes back. Now this particular is a 3D render cinematic. It's utilizing the one that, you know, we like, but it didn't get right as a reference point. And now what we'll do is just, just click generate Again, guys, you can spend so much time going down a rabbit hole with this program and try all of the other different types of buttons that it has in order to generate different styles. Again, you could actually just make yourself a cup of coffee and just watch all of the other, you know, renders that are coming up over here, even while you're waiting for your own prompts to be generated. And just basically get a kick out of the creativity of other designers out there, other people using this particular system. And you know what? Don't copy verbatim what other people create. That's not right. You know, the print on demand industry is huge. There's a lot of room for everybody. You don't need to be a carbon copy of any other of the sellers, designers, users out there. But instead, copy the prompts, mix and match, utilize them for your own creative endeavors. Use your creativity for creating something and see what this platform will create for you and start providing designs for the people who visit your shops to get something unique that they're not going to see in other shops. Okay, so let's take a look and see. I would imagine by now it should have come back. Okay, so I'm not arguing. I'm explaining why I'm right. I'm not arguing. I'm explaining why right. So it's missing the I'm. But again, look, I'm not arguing. I'm just explaining why I'm right. It got it spot on. So I could easily download this particular design, upscale it, open it into Illustrator, Photoshop, Photopea, even Canva for that matter. There it is. It just came in full now. It's fully rendered. And, you know, it can create some really amazing designs. So there you have it, everybody. As you can see, it's really not that difficult to use. It's very user friendly. And the amount of designs that you can create is basically just limited to your creativity, to your imagination. So I certainly hope that you found value in today's video. If you liked it, if you found value in it, please do me a favor, smash that like button in appreciation. If you're new to this channel or haven't as yet subscribed to it, click on that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, help me to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of this calendar year. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to do so. If you are interested in taking your print on demand business to the next level and learning how to generate more sales, please consider clicking on one of the two video thumbnails that have appeared on your screen now. 
I'll see you there. Thanks again.